Wizzle. Guys, it's me, Crashy, here talking about some Overwatch here on YouTube. And today, uh, as you can read in the title, we're going to be talking about the competitive mode payload. So, granted, there are there's three different game types in, in Overwatch. There's King of the Hill, there's the two CP maps, or Assault, I think is what it's technically called, and then the um, payload maps. So, um, basically, if you guys haven't heard already, there is the competitive mode that's going to be coming out this month. And it is actually on the PTR that went live today. And uh, as of now, I have played a handful of games on the PTR. You're actually going to be watching one of them, or you are watching one of them right now. And um, we, we got to talk about Payload. So, unfortunately, this gameplay, I think, is King of the Hill. But we're going to be talking about Payload, and I don't really think it's relevant because we're probably not going to get through the whole gameplay regardless. But Payload, um, for competitive, has been the best maps. King's Row, Dorado, I mean, even Route 66 isn't so bad. Um, Nimbani, we've just, there, you know, Payload really, really works well for competitive Overwatch, and the reason it worked well is because in the competitive scene, we're running a rule set, or rules essentially, called, uh, Stopwatch, and what Stopwatch does is, Team 1 will attack, Team 2 defend, and however far they get, you basically are, are, are beating a clock, you're, you're setting a clock if you're Team 1, say you make it all the way through the map, this is for simplicity, you make it all the way through the map, and you do it in nine minutes. Well, okay, your time is nine minutes. Now the other team gets their turn on the map, and they have to do it shorter, essentially. Or if they have, they can't do it at all, well then obviously team one wins. So, stopwatch is really good because it's it's very literal. It's grounded. It, it, it makes sense. If team one can't complete the map and team two did, well then the time is out of the window. That team wins. But if they both are at the middle point, you, if, does that make sense? Like you know what I mean? Like. Whoever does the map faster should win that map. Well, we got competitive payload map, or uh, competitive payload, or competitive mode. And um, you play payload, and they kind of are going with this point system. And so there are certain objectives within each payload map. For example, in Gibraltar, that first underpass, that's a point. Um, the door right before hangar, that's a point. The door at the end of hangar, that's a point and the finishing point for the map, that's a point. So I'm going to use Gibraltar as my example. Um, you know, there, it's, a, it's a payload map, time is irrelevant, and you have a potential of four points to win the map. And um, so winning the map in this competitive format isn't really relevant. It's about getting as many points as you can. So if you're not winning the map, you're getting a potential of one to three points on Gibraltar. I think some of the maps only have three points. I think some of the maps have four, so it's not super consistent, but you see my point. You're trying to get as many points as you can. The problem with this is, if Team 1, and, and just try, really try to think about this, because I don't think this video is going to take me very long, because it's a very simplistic problem. Like, the, the, the solution isn't necessarily simplistic, but the problem is very simple to understand. If Team 1 finishes the map, they finish all the way through, so like I said, Gibraltar, they get all four points, and they finish the map in three minutes. That's like blazing speed, they're probably one of the better teams, or they just stomped whatever team they're facing against. Holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, three minutes, like that's insane. So team two's up, and they have to attack now, and they, you know, get on the payload, and they struggle, and they struggle, they get a point. You know, they're back on the payload, they die, they get picked, they're, you know, they're not organized, but they manage a good team fight, they get the second point. Again, and again, and then they finish the map, even if it took them into overtime, even if their time is 10 minutes and 30 seconds, let's say, you know, that's usually about how long the games can get max, they still get four points. Well, what does that mean? Team 1 got four points in three minutes, Team 2 got four points in ten and a half minutes. Well, guess what? It's tied, isn't it? It's one to one. We gotta go to tiebreaker. Now, the way that tiebreaker works, or sudden death, whatever it's called, is it's on the same map you played, so they're not gonna send you the King of the Hill like they did in previous versions of um, testing the beta. They're gonna send you back to Gibraltar, but now they're gonna flip a coin, essentially, and oh, 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 well, look, look, look at this. Team two won the coin toss. They're the attacking team. So it's just random who gets to attack. Well, okay, so now they attack, and they have the potential to win the game. Everybody knows that Overwatch is heavily favored for the attacking team. So, 
not only does this not address any issues that we had with the previous versions of beta testing competitive mode for payload, it actually kind of makes the sudden death aspect of it worse. Because at least if we were going to force us to tie, we could go to King of the Hill, but now one team has to defend and the other team has to attack in an attack heavy game type. It just makes no sense. Like, how are we supposed to show skill on this? Like, why does it matter if Cloud9 comes out and wins the map in two, three, four minutes if, you know, shitty Team B can come out and win it in max time and still get rewarded the same and force it into overtime or force it into sudden death? It's just really frustrating. Um, I, I don't even think that's all of the ranked issues. I mean, let's not, I mean, I'll state it, but let's not get me started essentially on the no hero limit. I mean... This is the furthest thing from the competitive mode that the majority of the competitive players were hoping for. You know, we've been really pushing for stopwatch, we use it in all our tournaments. We've been really pushing for one hero limit, we use it in all our tournaments. And you give us no hero limit, no stopwatch point system that forces a coin flip um, to start off sudden death. So, I don't know guys, it's, uh, it, it's really... It's really disappointing, but more than that, it's really troublesome. Like, I have no idea how far back in this growing of an eSport it's going to put us. Like, I just don't see... I don't know what this is going to do for the game, and that really worries me. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please, let's discuss this. I mean, this has to be talked about. The only way we can fix this is by raising the issues. So, leave me a like if you would. It really does help me out. I'm trying to do this whole YouTube content creation, competitive gaming thing seriously again like the olden days and um yeah let me know what you think in the comments below so i appreciate it check out my twitter and twitch in the comments or in the description box below and i'll see you guys in the comments section all right peace